but it's the truth, and it is the truth. It's not just a truth that's mm -hmm. been made up. We're not mm -hmm. trying to make ourselves feel cool. This is real, right? Yeah, this is a yeah, real thing. On. It isn't just something we're making up. God's, this is his truth, yeah, yeah. and we need to keep we need to keep that in mind. You know, I think we because we drag ourselves down. We keep drag. We allow that Adamic nature that we've talked about, and the legalism from the law. We yes. let those things control us, and mm -hmm. and we know we we know that that's a mental block, right? Mm -hmm. That's the that's the lie. Those are the lies that we cannot listen to. We can only listen to this, right? Yes. This is the only thing that we should be listening to and believing. Mm -hmm. Now we're going to go into the, the changed. Now we we've been we were a mystery. We've been chosen, but now we have to be changed. Second Corinthians five seventeen. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Most of us are going, all right, we don't really need to go there. We know that one. <laughs> Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. That's the beginning. That's the beginning. We become in Christ. So then we start this challenge. We start this walk into being changed. When we know this promise that old things have passed away, they all, old things are passed away. They're already passed away. The only reason that we ever have any problems with, with the old things is because we keep bringing them up. We are the ones that dwell on them. We are the ones that keep them alive. We keep pulling those shoes off from underneath the bed and looking at them. We have to get rid of it. We have to stop doing that. We aren't in the past anymore. We're moving forward continually. Uh, Colossians 3.10. And have put on the new man, which is renewed in knowledge after the image of him that created him. So we have, um, well, oh, did I, hold on. Well, in verse 9, I don't know why I eliminated it, but it's lying not one to another, seeing that ye have put off the old man with his deeds. That's very important. So, well, you have put off the old man with his deeds and have put on the new man, which is renewed in knowledge after the image of him that created him. So, okay, so we have put off the old man and put on the new man. And that was done at the cross, really. You know, the old man was crucified. He's already dead. And what we're doing now is learning who the new man is. We're learning all about Christ so that we can be, look like him. Come on, amen. Now, um, Ephesians, let's go to Ephesians 4.22. I really like those, these scriptures, uh, these three scriptures. I was quite kind of excited to be able to put these in here. Um, you know, we always talk about uh, being renewed in the spirit of our mind, you know. Well, we're, you know, we can't change unless our minds are renewed. But the, the three scriptures here, this, <laughs> this is, really, I, is really awesome. Why do we renew our minds? So Ephesians 4, 22. That you put off concerning the former conversation, the old man, which is corrupt according to the deceitful lusts. And then verse 24. And that you put on the new man, which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. So we're taking off, we put off the concerning the former conversation. And in, in my Bible, it says conversation is life. So we've put off the former life of the old man, which is corrupt according to the deceitful lusts, and that you put on the new man, which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. Well, how do we do that? Verse 23, and be renewed in the spirit of your mind. It's just that simple. Just by, by renewing our thoughts and doing and and just not allowing the old conversations, the old life, yes. to be in us and be bigger than the new life that's in us, and and it's just we take off, we put off the old, we put on the new by the renewing of our mind, a continual process. Romans twelve and two. Somebody could quote this faster than we're getting to it, right? <laughs> All right, let's do that. And be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is the good and acceptable and perfect will of God. 
this shows just how important, you know, we, again, we just, we know these words. There's nothing new being said here. But in order to know or prove or make real to ourselves, to prove to ourselves that God has a good and acceptable and perfect will for us, we won't know that until we've renewed our minds with the Word of God. We can't just imagine the things that He has for us. It's not in our, it's not in our mind to do that. It's not, it's not in our old nature or anything about us. It can only be found in the Word of God. That's why we have to spend time in it so that we can be changed. It, it's just that simple, but you know, it's just doing it. And we have to do it. We, it's, it's a job. It's a job. It's part of our life. It's not just, just like we eat and eat and breathe and sleep, we have to read the Word of God. We have to allow it to get in us so we can make the changes in this that need to be made. Amen. Philippians 2 and 5. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. That sounds like it's impossible, but it isn't. It's not something that we cannot achieve. God would not put that in there if it wasn't something that was possible. Mm -hmm. We know that we, this old nature <coughs> cannot control us. He didn't, he didn't have an old nature, so his mind was continually on the things of the Father. He, he was, that's why he says, I, I do the things that I see my father do. I say the things that I hear him say. We, need, we really do need to get to that point where all of what he says and thinks and feels is all we want to say and think and feel. It's not impossible. It's, it's not impossible. It's something that can be done. And we're in that process. We're in that process. We've all changed. We, we have all can say that we've been changing daily. Since we've, since we've recognized these things, starting here, since you've been here, you know you've changed. I, you know, we all know we have. So it's such a blessing. Yeah. This ministry is such a blessing, and the teachings are, you know, amazing. Yeah. So it's, you know, thank God for it. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Yes. Yes. We wouldn't be doing this. You were, I, yeah. We wouldn't be doing this. Right. Where else would we be? I know I'd be in bed. <laughs> I, I wouldn't be in church at all. If, you know, I it wouldn't be. Yeah, it'd be a mess. Yeah, be a, a mess and, yeah, really a real mess. No, you know this is a miracle. We are in the midst of a miracle. We really are. You know, Rim is a miracle. <laughs> Okay, now we've been changed. We've we've been a mystery to God. In God, we've been chosen. We've been changed. Don't you wish it was just that quick? <laughs> we're done. <laughs> Wouldn't that be wonderful? Oh, my goodness. Now we're going to bear his image. Yeah, right. Let's go to Romans 8, 29. Yeah, there's no quick fix here. <laughs> I thought it was. I don't know. I thought it was. When I got saved, I thought that was it. Yeah. Uh, I really did. Boy, I'll tell you, this, yeah. this ministry was a real slap in the face to me. But <laughs> it was a real wake-up call. It's like, what? <laughs> well, no, I'm already, I'm already saved. But, you know, don't bother me with all these details. <laughs> you know, I really thought this was all there was to it. Oh my goodness, gee, God, you could have given me a little bit of a warning. You know? <laughs> it's been a little rough. Okay, uh, Romans eight twenty nine. <laughs> um, okay, let's see. I have to get there. Where the heck is it? <laughs> all right, eight twenty nine. For whom he did foreknow, he did. He also did predestinate to be conformed to the image of his son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. So he's we're his uh, he's a brother, you know he's our brother, mm -hmm. and we are to be to look like him. When we look in the scriptures, we see him, and when people see us, they see Christ. That's the process. If we don't spend time in the mirror, we don't look in the mirror of his word then we don't look like mm -hmm. him. And then people don't see him. You know, we, we sabotage our own walk by not spending time in his presence mm -hmm. and in, in the word. Mm -hmm. And we become dry. We become dry and empty and there's nothing in us to give anybody except old things or, um, you know, we don't need to give anybody any old advice. Something from 
like we've been told, don't go to friends that don't know Christ to ask them for advice because they're just going to, they know you from your past. Mm -hmm. They don't know you for your future. Yeah. They're just going to feed you from things that are old and dead, yeah. and mm -hmm. you don't want to feed from those things. That's the whole okay. point is to get away from those old dead things. Mm -hmm. So we really have to be very, very uh, cautious as to who, how many old friends we hang around with and how close we let them remain, right? right? Yeah. We need to stay with the, with the body and with people who know and understand. Um, let's see, uh, 1 Corinthians 15, 49. And as we have borne the image of the earthy, we shall also bear the image of the heavenly. Well, we know that. We, we are heavenly beings. We're what are we spiritual beings having an earthly experience. We're giving God a, an, uh, an experience. I hope he's enjoying it. <laughs> we're, giving him, we're letting him live his life through us on this earth. Uh, 2 Corinthians 3.18 And we all, with open face, beholding as in a glass the glory of the Lord, are changed into the same image from glory to glory, even as by the Spirit of the Lord. Mm -hmm. The glass is what we know is a mirror. It's his reflection. The word is, reflects him. Every word reflects Christ. Everything, is, everything we read in this book reflects him, and it should reflect us. We are, and we should become a mirror image of Christ and, and be able to show people, show people that. Yeah. And it's, it's, you know, it's those are easy words to say. We know we all kind of fumble when, you know, we're supposed to be talking to people and ministering to people. We all have those moments where we, you know, like, oh, I don't know, I don't know. But, you know, we have to really, you know, dig in our heels and, and be determined in uh, sharing him with people as much as we can because that's what they need. Everybody needs him. They may not know that's what they need, but they they know they need something. Right. We need it. Right. I, you know, we needed it. That's why we're here. So we need to make sure that other people also can can experience him. 